Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily to keep you updated on the real life situation in my country as this awful war with Russia continues, but I believe soon we will win and I want you to see this process in my videos. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe because the world needs to know more about Ukraine and I'm very grateful for your comments and advice that you leave because they inspire future videos. And my today's vlog is actually a dialogue with those of you who talk a lot about good Russians. Well, first of all, to clarify the term, I have to say that in Ukraine, in this uh, atmosphere of black humor, we say that good Russians are dead Russians. But coming back to a serious topic, I agree that there are some people who are Russians and they are good. But how good they are for the future of the world, for the process of this war and for the development of Russia after we win, after Putin's regime fall and we will have to continue living. So many of you provide me links to so-called good Russians. Often these are people younger than me, new generation who wants to travel, who wants to discover the world. And as soon as the war in Ukraine started, sanctions hit Russian economy, uh, mobilization began to grab young people and force them to go and fight in Ukraine. Many of these good Russians escaped Russia, fled Russia because of their political beliefs. Many of them are now immigrants in uh, countries that have visa-free regime with Russia or even abroad. What is even more complicated, some of these political Russian refugees try to group together with Ukrainians and to get similar benefits and support because they also suffer from the Putin's regime. I agree they suffer, but the extent of these sufferings and the responsibilities for Putin's regime are totally different. Uh, you know that I am not tolerant uh, when we talk about the responsibilities of uh, societies in the life, political, military, cultural life of the country, because I believe we have all the instruments or we must have all the instruments to influence the political decisions. And if we are not, we cannot be considered citizens. Russia is definitely not a, an example of civil society, but of an authoritarian, totalitarian state. But you know my favorite quote, if the country is run by a dictator, it is not only a dictator to blame. There is something specific, something extraordinary inside Russian society that leads to their choice of Tsars, dictators, tyrants that later spoil life both for the society of Russia inside and outside, like in case with Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, Chechnya, and all the civilized world, because now we live under the threat of nuclear bombs, under various conditions that can spoil ecology and traumatize the planet in general. So these good Russians, uh, what they do? They often run vlogs or they work as journalists uh, and uh, they describe the things they dislike in Russia very often without naming people responsible for the things they don't like. Not naming Putin, not naming political decisions, not naming war in Ukraine war, but saying, I don't want to talk about that, something bad. Like, I watched lots of such videos, especially when you advise me these people, and what I see, a beautiful girl or a beautiful boy who is so sad, like, looks more sad than I am in a country at war with so many problems in my life. And uh, they hide their eyes and they say, I won't tell you what is going on, but I feel bad. Life has changed for me. And it is more about uh, like talking. I do understand some things got worse in their life with the start of war, sanctions and mobilizations, but it is incomparable to what happens in Ukraine. That's why I often see it at the universities because, you know, I'm connected to education and I often see it at the universities and I hate it that many universities provide scholarships both for Ukrainian and Russian students on similar terms, saying that both of them are victims of Putin's regime. No, we cannot equate an, a representative of an aggressor state to a victim. I cannot imagine Nazi students together with Jews who came from concentration camps till the war continues. 
We haven't stopped Putin's aggression and violence. Nothing inside Russian society signals that these students, these youth are actually fighting against Putin. No, they only record some vlogs where not naming him, they hint that they don't like what he is doing. So we cannot equate them to students who lost their parents, for example, during missile attacks on Chernihiv. And this is very wrong. Uh, this is an example of toxic tolerance or uh, kindness that actually does not need lead to anything. Uh, we have to work with Russian society very hard if we are going to continue living with them on this planet. And this task will be really difficult. We have to change the ideology of country tremendously. And by saying that they are just the same as Ukrainians, that they are victims just as we are, this is a very wrong thing. Maybe we can target emotionally, I don't know, ideologically those good, better, more modern Russians, but not by making them similar to Ukrainians, not victimizing them, but using their resources for the future of a different Russia. But the problem is they don't believe in their own society. They don't believe in Russia at all. This is the only explanation that being like normal, being good, they escape, they flee Russia in hundreds and thousands. They have no, I don't know, patriotism or no desire to change their country. And if the best representatives of Russian society does not believe in their own society, what can be done? I am happy to be Ukrainian. I am happy to be Ukrainian knowing that it imposes lots of dangers on me. I can be hit by a missile, I can lose electricity, something else may happen, like I've lost lots of opportunities that I had a year ago and many troubles in my like everyday living and I'm in the safe, the safe zone. Those who lost their flats, education, their loved ones are in like 100 times worse situation than me. But still, we are happy to be a part of our country because we believe in its future. We want to build it. We want to rebuild it. It is our responsibility first to save it from Russian orcs and then to rebuild it, to change it, to reform it. And we believe in it even during air raid alarms, even when we don't have enough electricity or it is cold in our houses or even when there are no streets on which we used to live. We stay. And uh, we believe, like, there are lots of things that we have to do. And Russians are different. There are many of them, like, you believe that there are many of them who are good. And they do not unite. They do not try to influence uh, their regions, for example. Maybe not in Moscow, but elsewhere. In Siberia, there are lots of separatist movements or else, but they are not working. They are fleeing. They are saving themselves, number one reason. And number two reason, they don't believe in Russian society. And Russian society worked really hard for that. Like for decades, they were trying to close various international programs, exchange programs. They hate grant giving programs, describing them like uh, rich capitalists will make you do bad immoral things that are common for the rotting West and so on. And as a result, they have a very gloomy, gray society. And in, if in that society we have a small percentage of brighter, more fashionable, more educated people who traveled more, uh, who speak better English, they are not ready to become active citizens. They escape the country. That's why I don't feel good for them, because I believe it was their responsibility to stay in Russia to unite in Russia and to shake Russian regime, to help us. We will fight them from our side, pushing them to the front. Society inside Russia, this great gloomy, gray, gloomy society may be dissatisfied with mobilization and other things, and they need some 
sparkles. These people could have been these sparkles, but they've chosen to move to Georgia, to the United States, elsewhere, and to continue saying that I am a Russian oppositioner. No, you are a young person who used an opportunity of uh, bad time for my country, Ukraine, to escape your depressive Russia and to attract people to your person because you are Russian who is different from Russians. But you're different, good. You're more modern, you're more fashionable, but you are not an active citizen too. Why I guarantee you that Ukraine will win this war and you will not be sorry if it becomes a part of the European Union, NATO or anything else, because we will fight corruption, we will do reforms. Why? Not because of Zelensky, not because of our politicians, not because of EU politicians or American politicians who will visit us, but because of our active civil society, because of those people who organized revolutions, might not when we reach a certain amount of anger, dissatisfaction with the actions of our um, deputies, presidents and so on, we react, we demonstrate that, we take responsibility, we unite and we represent the power of people, which is actually the essence of uh, democracy. That's why, for me, there are no good Russians. There are good immigrants from Russia who perhaps should simply assimilate to the societies to which they moved, stop speaking much about their opposition or something else because it is funny, and start enjoying their life, I don't know, traveling, eating all else, something else, because I don't see any actions on their side that can prove that they are a true opposition. No, they just don't like what's happening, they are not ready to take responsibility, they don't want to change, they are afraid, and they move to the countries they've always dreamt to live in, using the opportunity, and that opportunity is war and thousands of dead people in Ukraine. So, do not advise me, good Russian vloggers and others who moved and now want to be victimized. This is totally wrong. Being Ukrainian, I ask you not to treat me as a victim. I'm a person in trouble, but everything's gonna be good for my country because me and you, our allies, we work hard together for that and we will achieve that. That is a temporarily sacrifice that we have to take to live in a better world without Putin, with free, independent Europe and a safe world. Oh, maybe <laughs> I sounded a little bit angry, but I have turned on that teacher mode and that's how I feel about good Russians who fled Russia. They don't believe in their own society and that is really bad, both for them and for their society. Thank you so much for watching my videos and thank you for your coffees that you buy and thank you for the fact that you become my patrons. I'm honored and I promise that we will try to figure out and develop more projects in future. I was super happy to be on top 10 YouTubers uh, by Kyiv Post that are informational warriors. That was such an unexpected surprise and thank you for congratulating me on that. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe because there are so many things I want to tell you about Ukraine and thank you so much for being with me and for being with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!